G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today, we're gonna to be having a look at a plane that you could probably quite confidently call pay to win. This is the SU-11. It sits at a battle rating of 7.0, and realistically, it should be at a battle rating of 7.7. .7. This plane is basically an F-84G, but Russian, um, and kind of resembles the ME-262, but quite frankly, is better in practically every way. The SU-11 features extremely good energy retention, and when it gets up to speed, it really excels in that role. It also has the old faithful guns, the uh, Noodleman NS-23, or the N uh, NS-23s and the N-37D. Do you know what else is also old faithful? Today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Opera GX. Those of you who've followed my content for the last year should be familiar with Opera GX and its excellent suite of features that offers a unique and highly customizable browsing experience. Whether it be the integrations with social media giving you easy access to Discord, Twitter and more, the ability to use Chrome's vast array of extensions and now the ability to take Opera GX wherever you go with Opera GX Mobile and synchronize it with your desktop using GX Flow, Opera GX has something for everyone. From the lowest end hardware with their CPU limiter and hot tabs killer, to high end hardware with RGB integrations and vast amount of customizations, such as custom animated wallpapers, I'm sure you'll find something to like about Opera GX. Opera GX has been thoroughly road tested by me over the last year and has been my default browser since then, and thanks to its frankly insane flexibility, Opera GX is my favourite browser. Head to the video description below and download Opera GX for free. I can thoroughly recommend Opera GX. Give them a try. You might just like them too. Make the switch, which is even easier now with Opera GX's quick import tool, which imports all the settings from your previous browser to Opera. Thank you to Opera GX for sponsoring this video. So with that out of the way, we are basically having a look at a couple of matches here. One of these will be a really short-ish match, but we'll show you the potential of the SU-11 and kind of maybe where you can catch it with its pants down. But Honestly, this plane really does struggle to find itself in a situation where it can't function. If you play your plane correctly, you're going to have a very, very easy time in this plane, and that will be demonstrated by the second match. This thing is honestly very, very strong, and you can see whilst I am pulling a fair amount of speed as, uh, as steep as this climb is, this match might go sour quite quickly. There's an F-84 at altitude and there's an F-84 barreling towards our team. There's also an A2D heading towards my team and an A2D heading towards the bases. So I need to make sure that I don't get myself caught up in a prop fight. The SU-11's one downside is it is heavy. It's not gonna outturn a P-80. It's not even gonna outturn, uh, I guess you can in certain circumstances, outturn a Kika. You're gonna be struggling to dogfight the majority of jets at this tier. So the one thing that you shouldn't be doing is turning the one thing that you don't need to do is turn and as a result you can just use your speed use your energy to almost do whatever the hell you want provided that you have built it up in the lead up to the match so a2d1 here is looking fairly juicy i'm going to go for a little quick shot there get a critical hit and the f84b is coming in really close and i barely barely miss those rounds We've got the Kika in the distance there coming in close, but I've noticed the F-84B has come in extremely close behind me and there's another F-84 who wants my booty. So I have to be very careful of where I go now. Noticing that my speed is starting to get a little bit low and I'm starting to feel a little bit of the, the heaviness of this plane, this F-84B is barely able to stay onto me because the F-84B is quite heavy. Now, another one comes in from behind who is ready to uh, swiggity swooty come and get that booty and I just need to get out of the way of his guns and go for no, no head-ons with the Kika. The Kika knows better as well and is going to go away from me quite quickly. Now, at this point, I think I just need to get my speed, get out of there, and come back when I am in a better position because the F-84B does not pick up speed nearly as quickly as I do, and so that can potentially give me an advantage here. So, whilst the F-84B is being preoccupied by some uh, friendlies there, I'm going to go after this maybe F-80, depending on the uh, situation, depending on who's going after me. I've also got enemies way above me, so this is looking pretty damn hairy if I don't get myself out of this crappy situation. I'm going to keep my speed up. I'm hitting the 710 kilometers an hour, which is very, very nice. I'm starting to exceed the speeds of some of these props, and so I will no longer be a threat to them. Speaking of threats, this F-89B is absolutely not a threat, and I'm just going to go for a couple of quick volleys, get that pilot snipe, and have a nice day with some nice RP. 
And now that I've gotten so much distance away from my opponents, I'm going to nose over and hopefully go back to some more enemies. There's a couple of enemies that are, I believe, up high still, and they're going to be my major threats, so I am keeping a bit of altitude, and I am keeping most of my speed. See, there's that F-84 back at altitude. He could potentially be a threat, and if he's an F-84G, which I can't remember at this point, it's going to be a fairly tough fight, because I believe the F-84G can actually outturn me, especially in a flat turn and a... Uh, and a horizontal dogfight. Otherwise, in a vertical, I believe the SU-11 will come out on top. Now, the J-29 goes for a super risky bisky head-on, but now is uh, dealing with an F-80A behind him, and the F-80A can pretty much out everything the J-29, uh, and so I need to be there to save my friendo. And I managed to get a critical hit as the F-84 is starting to come back in, and I've noticed that he might potentially be a bit more of a threat, and in that hesitation, I may have just lost my buddy there in the uh, J-29, but I have a friendly there who is able to, I suppose, try and get some more shots and try and save a friendly. So, whilst that guy goes down, I get myself killed number three, which is quite nice. Now, this F-84 turns out to be an F-84B, and you can kind of tell by the distance that uh, you're closing it. The F-84B is, uh, I don't know, I haven't flown it in many, many years, but it is quite a tough jet to fly, even when it was uh, a fairly simple matchmaker for this type of plane. So I'm going to go for some speculative shots, maybe try and get him to move, maybe try and get him to dodge. And you can see I'm starting to push 900 here, and the F-84 is really not going to stand much of a chance. I suppose if he really could, if he had everything with him in terms of his upgrades, everything with him in terms of his engine, and maybe the lowest fuel possible, he could potentially outrun me, but it is not going to look good for the F-84. Even so, he's going to hit the map border soon, and he's going to be reset. So just as he is sort of matching my speed there, it's going to be a pretty sad day for the F-84. You can see I'm starting to close, and um, yeah, 7.3 versus a 7.0, and the 7.0 basically holds all the cards. I don't really find that to be fairly uh, fair and uh, interesting. I would much rather this plane be at a higher battle rating, and you can see now that I am hitting the map border, I'm going to go vertical, because when it resets us, it's going to reset us at a fairly low speed, and I know for a fact that I should be able to dive in on this F-84. Have a look at the respawn spot, and I am less than 2 kilometers, or just over 2 kilometers rather, uh, behind him, and I have plenty of altitude to dive, pick up some speed, and catch up to the F-84. And the F-84 doesn't really have the chance to gain enough speed to get away from me on the flip side. So he's basically screwed. And I hold all the power here, which to me is, uh, it's fun when you're, when you're playing it. But if I wanted to play the F-84B, that's not really going to be fair. And if I want to play any other jet that is at uh, 7.0, 7.3 or 7.7, .7, I'm going to find myself having a very, very tough matchup against the SU-11. And whilst that's not an entirely bad thing, Having all the cards in your favor, except for turning, is really not that fun. Uh, having to use a little bit of brain is also very, very good. And um, yeah, F-84B doesn't really stand a chance. Things like a vampire also don't really stand a chance against this thing. I found to be out energy by this thing all the time. Uh, and the SU-11 is just, it's just a monster. And I'll, I'll show you exactly what I mean when we get into this next match after I can maybe land the NS-23s on this guy, and there we go, there's another hit. That should be it. He should be falling into the ground at the moment, and uh, he just bails instead. So that is match number one. This, this is really going to blow your socks off. Honestly, this match is absolutely batshit crazy. And, uh, oh my god, strap yourselves in. SK-60, you might think these things are really scary, but honestly, they're, they're not. They just turn well, and they're kind of slow, and they're kind of mediocre, to be honest. But anyway, people are scared of them. Here's how you deal with them. You basically sit behind them. I'm not kidding. You just wait for them to get slow, and you just pick them off. These things are not fast. And the key with the uh, Russian guns is to get your enemies nice and slow. So if you can energy yourself into a correct position, you can see here I'm at 700 kilometers per hour, and I'm, I'm pretty quick at this point. I still have 1,500 meters of altitude sort of left to spare, and there's still plenty of opportunities here for me to go and get some more altitude. This plane accelerates, like I said, and holds that energy retention at those high speeds extremely well. And so this is really my opportunity just to make some kills quite easy. A2D1 looks like he's just being an absolute lemon. Uh, I am more than happy to take that kill. And I'm just going to keep gaining my altitude very, very slowly, waiting for some more enemies to pop up. This particular map is... Uh, 
fairly well known for its sparse amount of enemies. You sort of get a, a, a sort of smattering of enemies here and there. Most of them tend to go down one end of the map, and then you get some going for the other, and you'll get a couple of others going for AI, ground targets, bombing targets. And speaking of bombing targets, if you've noticed in the top right corner of the screen, when I go back to the neutral position, there is a B-29. He's almost five kilometers away from me, and he's about two kilometers up in the vertical. Have a look at this. I have 450 kilometers an hour of airspeed, and I'm bursting up to 4,000 meters and more. I'm able to burst up that high and get some guns off and get that kill. To me, that that was absolutely incredible. I've just bursted up on 450 kilometers an hour of airspeed to 5,000 meters. That is a jump of 2,000 meters with 450 kilometers an hour of airspeed. The energy retention on this thing is absolutely unheard of. Honestly, this thing is, is, is just a beast of its own. And for me, that, that's something that you only really see from something like a G91 or something that's 7.7 .7 worthy. To me, this isn't something that you would give to a, to a 7.0. This is something that, I don't know, something better than the MiG-9, that's for sure. This plane absolutely exceeds the competition by quite a long shot. And this is what I'm kind of talking about by this is not 7.0 performance. This is absolutely 7.7 .7 performance. Now, speaking of performance, the uh, team has has had a little bit of a poor performance here. Um, everyone's kind of died, and the SU-11s are... Have a look at the way they're playing. They're going for sort of roundabout ways. They're turning in the horizontal, and that's quite playing into the uh, Mystere and the Oregon's favours here. So before I go and uh, pick up the pieces, or at least try and pick up the pieces, I'm just going to go and try and scab a sneaky B-29 here who is going to end up with a very unfortunately high repair cost. And that's another thing that I found, the V-29 doesn't really uh, doesn't really like these planes. I, I have actually played the B-29 whilst this thing is uh, fairly prominent in the matchmaker, and you really don't stand much of a chance just because it picks up so much speed. Now, speed and energy are the two main things about this plane, and have a look at the just distance that I'm able to get between myself and these enemy planes. And even on the rollover, I'm able to really make the hurt on the, or lay the hurt out on things like this Oregon. I've managed to rope it open perfectly, and all I need to do is land the shots, and beautiful. There's kill number, I think it's four. The ME262 is about to make it the Ace Arena, and boom. How bloody easy is that? Kill number six there with the B29A. The J26 and the Oregon and the Heikel 11 are the only enemies that are left. The J29 here is going to come back, and I think I'm going to go for a quick little head-on, but not really going to risk all of that. Those 20 mils are quite deadly. All you need to do is play the energy, and when you play the energy, your opponents just have no chance. And for me, that is a really fun thing, but at the same time, on the same coin, is it really fair? Is this plane really a plane that you should be flying at 7.0? I think this is a 7.7 .7 worthy plane, or even a, a 7.3 worthy plane. Things like the Oregon, which I believe sit at 7.3 now, are uh, not really up to scratch against this thing. The F-80A can outturn this thing, and you can get it with its pants down, but honestly, if you play this plane right, it is absolutely untouchable. Keeping your altitude, keeping your speed, and of course, not giving away too much of the uh, of the fun to your enemies. Now, <laughs> I decided to ruin this guy's fun because I'm an asshole. But Heikel 111H6, not really the best spot at 7.0 to be flying that thing. But you know what? I'll take it. It's a kill. It's Silver Lines, and uh, <laughs> it's kill number seven. Jesus Christ! Now I have two rounds of N37D and 94 rounds of NS23. And this Oregon is really, really struggling against me because he's just got no more energy left. And the only thing he can really do is run away. Now, he has turned underneath me, which is a bit of a bad move because he's just killed a lot of precious energy that he needs. However, that's to get away from the SU-9 and the LA-200. As he goes away and engages that SU-9, I figure now it's my time to strike. And I have managed to retain so much speed here that I can function on about 90% throttle, and I kind of need to because I'll compress into the ground otherwise. I'm going to go for a cheeky little shot here. I miss, but that's okay because I've set my plane up so well that I can just go straight up into the vertical, come around, and the SU-9 is providing here the perfect bait for the Mystere or the Oregon. 
It's basically Mystere. It's a budget Mystere. And uh, it definitely flies like a budget Mystere. And with the N23s, that is game. Holy shit, this plane is absolutely batshit insane. To me, the SU-11 really is not a 7.0 plane. It's probably the only plane at this point in time that you could genuinely call pay to win. And I would have no problems with anyone calling this thing pay to win. It is hideously expensive too. And for a hideously expensive plane to be so damn powerful, despite it being, you know, it has its caveats, it has its weaknesses. But if you fly this thing even half right, you can do just so much damage. And this is demonstrated here. And even in a case where you're not able to get to your full acceleration all the time, that first match is still an excellent demonstration of the SU-11's capabilities. It's a plane that just is so damn strong. When you get a little bit of altitude and when you put that nose down, it just exceeds in every single way. There are two little things that can slow it down, and that is a 163 and something that catches you with your pants down. And if you can avoid those two things, you basically have it sold. That is how strong this thing is. This is the most potent plane at 7.0 by an absolute long shot. This is more powerful than the Sea Jesus. This is more powerful than the Vampire. This is the single alpha. And honestly, it's alpha by a long way. And it's, it's not really right. But ladies and gentlemen, that'll do it for today. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you to Opera GX for sponsoring the video. And of course, thank you very much for spending your time, spending your money on decals, etc. I have basically acquired enough money to finish my water cooling loop and I've purchased a 4K monitor. So expect some content in 4K, albeit you know 1080p gameplay, but at 4K. But thank you very much for that, ladies and gentlemen. It means the world to me. So take care and I'll catch you next time.